this meeting really came about because of, of a number of reasons, but basically we uh, want to celebrate the 20 years of Pegasus. Our initial uh, first Pegasus prototype came about in 2001, and I'll talk a little bit about um, uh, what we've done back then, and, and then you hear all the talks about what we're doing today. Also last year, we spent uh, most of the year, most of the pandemic working on Pegasus 5.0, and so we want to, to talk about the new functionalities that we have and, and show you what we've done and, and, and so forth. But most of all, what we really want to do is to, to listen to you. So we want to, to find out how you use Pegasus in your work. What do you find that's useful? Uh, what uh, we can improve? So we, we really welcome the dialogue with you. We also want to share information amongst our users to, to see how Pegasus is used in the various domains. So it's always interesting to see one person using Pegasus in a particular way. And then that translates to how others are using it as well. Um, a good example I've had of that was um, for image mosaicing. So this is work that um, Bruce Berryman at Caltech has done with us, I think, um, since 2000, we worked together first in 2003. And then I was presenting that work at the conference and somebody from uh, that does uh, Hilo seismology looked at this and said, ah, we do exactly the same thing. We take images of the sun, different pieces and uh, over time, and then we have to stitch it together in an appropriate way. So it really, these things translate across domains, the, the techniques and the ways people analyze data. So I think that can be an interesting part of this uh, meeting. Another thing that we want to discuss and we'll have some lightning talks towards the end is uh, we want to look at what are the new applications? What do people want to do with workflows? And we've seen um, people do a lot of uh, machine learning nowadays in workflows and that changes how the workflows behave. That might change how the workflow system management has to support this. So we're very interested in seeing are people reusing re it right now? What do you see the challenges of a nice, these new applications as they're coming up? What can we do? Uh, so 20 years of Pegasus. So if, Wendy, could you please go to the next slide? So um, instead of doing a technical talk, I thought that I'll just talk about you know, how did Pegasus start? I think some of you know how it started. You've been there with us since the very beginning, um, but maybe others have not seen it as well. So um, when I, uh, I actually got hired uh, at ISI to start working uh, back in 2000, uh, working on the NSF uh, Griffin project, which was a grid physics network project. And Ron, who is on the call right now, was a co-PI on that project at that time as well. Well, he was a co-PI, I was just a, a, a worker bee. Uh, but uh, the whole idea around the project was to extend the concept of view materialization in databases to a distributed environment. And so the, the proposal was um, geared towards the developing a virtual data grid model where the data was published into the grid and then users could request the raw data or maybe derived data from the grid without needing to know whether the data was already computed, could have been computed by somebody else in the collaboration, or whether uh, it needed to be compu computed uh, on demand. So it was the issue whether you can retrieve something that's already out there, or you need to, to do some work and, 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 and compute it. So we took this concept and we, we tried to think about how do we translate that to computer science, this computer science idea, to something that a scientist might need. So at the time, there were a number of projects that were involved in Griffin. There was uh, SDSS, which is an astronomy project, Atlas and CMS, uh, which are high energy physics projects, and also LIGO, the gravitational wave physics project. And we started working with them back, uh, back in 2000. And we translated this virtual data scenario into the context. So um, in that case, we're looking they're looking at conducting process search of a data that was collected during a particular period of time. And then uh, given this high level request, the system would then have to understand the request, what it means. It would have to determine whether the data that's being requested has already been instantiated, has been computed, and if not, how to compute it, and then plan the data movement and the computations that are required to deliver the results to the user. And then once that plan was done, then uh, execute that plan. And for those of you who, who know Pegasus, you can see that really these planning and executions are the pieces that, that 
that have survived from that time. Next slide, please. So what happened, we, we started exploring um, actually AI techniques uh, back then with uh, Yolanda Gill and Jim Blythe at uh, ISI. And so we developed this prototype where the users would go to, to a web page that would put in the time frame uh, for that uh, request that they're interested in. They would um, you know, uh, provide other types of metadata. And then they would um, click a button and in the background, what the system would do is it would develop a plan of how to, to generate um, this data set. So on the right, you see the plan that was generated. So that was, um, it would take the raw data from the archive, it would, um, the appropriate data, it would then clean it, it would transpose it, um, it would then generate this uh, time frequency um, uh, image in which it would try to find candidates that look like a gravitational wave. And if there was a good event candidate, it would store it in a database for, for future view. So we're very happy with, with um, this prototype. We, we, we um, demoed it at SC. We had colleagues from LIGO come over and look at it. And um, it kind of fell flat. So what was lost in translation was this fact that the scientists didn't really like the high level abstraction that we showed them through the web, web interface. What they really liked though, is this concept of a workflow that you see on the right. So they liked thinking about the computations in terms of these different discrete steps. And they liked the fact that you could describe this computation in a high level way, in a way that's devoid of information about the execution environment, so that you can take this high level description and then map it onto different uh, environments for execution. And so from there really came this, our research for us and our development for us from, from this uh, 2001 failure with LIGO in some sense. Um, it, it's really finding this new research direction of workflow management and distributed environments when we looked at, at the planning and execution of workflows on heterogeneous resources. The next slide, please. So what, what, <clears throat> what we also saw, we started working with, with other scientists at, uh, besides LIGO. We also worked with um, uh, astronomers and I mentioned uh, Bruce Berman uh, from Caltech and the Montage Project. And also with uh, earthquake scientists from the University of Southern California, Scott Callahan and Phil Mecklen. And we found out that uh, um, between these various disciplines, so gravitational physics, where, where Duncan um, uh, does his work, that between gravitational physics, earthquake science, and astronomy, there are lots of commonalities at the computer science level that, uh, that uh, we, we can observe. So all, all these domains needed to describe complex workflows in a simple way. They needed to access uh, data that was distributed uh, across the, the wide area, so they have the different data repositories that the workflows need to access. The computational resources are distributed as well. So you, you need to be able to move computations and execute in different um, areas, uh, different uh, resources. And um, the, also the resources and the software changes over time. So you can imagine when we started in, in 2000, the world uh, looked very different than it does today. So our focus then became really to, to have that separation between the work for description and the work for execution, where the scientists can describe the work for this high level, and then Pegasus does the job of mapping um, the workflow onto the resources um, that are available to the scientists. And so we focus on, on workflow planning and then workflow scheduling, looking at issues of scalability and performance. We focus on optimizing Pegasus for various conditions. And um, also, obviously, after the planning process, we, we need to, to execute the task in, in a way that's fault tolerant and enables debugging and monitoring. And so back in 2002, we started a collaboration with uh, Miron Livni and his HD Condor team. And Miron, I'm very happy to have uh, Miron here with us today. And we're still collaborating uh, to this day. And uh, I have to say that this collaboration has been extremely valuable to us because we rely on proven technology that Maron and his team are providing to us via HD Condor to be able to execute faithfully and reliably the plans that, that Pegasus um, designs. So when you're using Pegasus, you're really using um, a lot of knowledge 
from us, but also a lot of expertise and software that comes from our collaborators. And so um, you met some of the team uh, today. Um, I just want to, again, um, the, the team has been great and they actually um, did all the work on this um, workshop. So I appreciate their work and I appreciate you being here. And um, I hope the program is of interest to you. Please do interact with us um, via Slack, via uh, questions, and we're happy to hear from you also afterwards. So we're here for you. And I pass the baton to, uh, to Karan, uh, who's going to talk about um, Pegasus 5.0. So welcome again, and it's great to have you here. Thank you.